Hello, everyone. Thanks for. Okay, restart. Restart. Re <laughs> Edit that out. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode three of the Financial Classroom. I'm your host, Will, and with me on the other side of the mic is Tim. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Today, we will be talking about how to succeed in your 20s and how it's going to affect your future and how you can set yourself up for a lifetime of financial success. So to get things started, let me ask you, Will, why is it important to get things in order in your 20s? Like so, the 20s are about having fun, right? Like why not wait till your, your 30s or your 40s even when retirement is maybe a little more in sight? Yeah, so I guess in your 20s, there's so many different, different things in life that you're learning. Some people are just graduating high school and they're getting into the college level. They're... Um, some people are starting to work. They're trying to find the trades that they're getting to, or they're trying to find, uh, you know, their future partner in law. There's so many things going on in your twenties. And mm -hmm. so many times people focus on education, focusing on, you know, uh, you got to do the right thing, but not many people talk about finances and finances in your twenties and, uh, things to do that will set yourself up financially that so when you're 30 or when you're 40 or you're 50 you'll look back you'll be like man i'm glad i made the steps that i did or i did the things that i did in my 20s to achieve financial success down the road um, so i guess today we'll be talking about different tips and tricks that tim and i did so with us to being both in our 20s actually and having done pretty well for ourselves financially, uh, we just want to share some of the tips and tricks that both of us have. And so, yeah, that uh, helped us uh, up to this point in life. Um, so, Tim, I, I don't know if you want to start off with uh, some of the habits or things that uh, someone in, in their 20s should have. Yeah, for sure. I mean... Uh, and just to just to clarify, when we talk about the twenties, we're including people who are nineteen, eighteen, who are just out of high school, all the way up till the end of their twenties. Yeah. Uh, so basically, I mean, anyone after high school, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the first step for for most people coming out of high school is university or college. Mm -hmm. So definitely one recommendation I would have is, is figure out what you want to do. If, if you don't want, know what you want to do, uh, just don't waste your time trying to figure out what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, for myself, I kind of, uh, when I went to university, I was trying to figure out, okay, uh, do, do I want to go into, into law enforcement or business? So I kind of, I took a couple classes to test that out. So, but that being said, even before that, I, I mentioned in episode one, I, I, before that I spent two years spending $17,000 a year going to school mm -hmm. when I had no clue what I wanted to do. And I mean, that had me at $21,000 in student loans mm -hmm. when I, when I left school. So it's definitely a, a price to pay not knowing what I wanted to do there. And, and you know, Tim, that's such a common thing. We see university students, uh, you talk to them and you ask what they're taking. And some of them say, I'm just taking general studies or I'm just taking, you know, elective classes because yeah. they don't know what they want to do yet. And mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't hurt to take a year off to go out and work for a bit to do, uh, get some yeah. life experience to do that and then figure out what you want to do. You don't have to go to school right out of high school and put yourself, if your parents can't help you out and put yourself in a tremendous amount of student loan debt, just so you can take general studies or trying to figure out what you want to do. So it is okay to take a year off to uh, go out, work construction, work at a real, to, real, real retail store and, or go into a restaurant and learn about different trades, different businesses and how they work and, and gain life experience that way before you go into school and potentially have to pick up some student loan debt or maybe you don't because you worked a year, right? Right, definitely. And, and there's even in some industries, there's opportunities for you with either no experience or maybe, maybe like a one-year certificate for you to 
be able to go into that industry and then at least you haven't invested yourself too heavily into that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even I, I, I was talking with my roommate last night and saying, hey, we're doing this podcast. And he was saying that one thing that he's seen in, uh, in, in his life is that some people will invest themselves so heavily into education when education isn't the be all and end all of your career. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for example, at the, at the accounting firm, uh, I, I went and did my whole bachelor <laughs> business administration, but there were people who were working the same level job as me mm -hmm. and they did, uh, I think it's a two or three year program that they did. Yeah. So they had a lot less invested, but we were still working the same job. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely worthwhile to look into that. If you can get to know people who will be able to explain, okay, what's the, what do I need for this job? Mm -hmm. That can make a huge difference for sure. And to add to that, the twenties is the time to figure out what you want to do. Uh, you can attend career fairs. You can ask for advice. Uh, people mm -hmm. will never turn down others who seek for advice. Uh, it's time to educate yourself. There's lots of free online resources nowadays. You can read into different jobs. You can listen to podcasts, uh, listen to talk shows, go on YouTube. There are so many different research uh, engines out there for you to figure out what you want to do in life, what you're passionate about, and something that also pays well. Uh, mm -hmm. If you just sit at home and pout and feel sorry for yourself, you'll never you know, succeed down the road in life. So yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And one other recommendation I would have is get whatever practical experience you can yeah. uh, for myself working at the, at, sorry, at the university, they had a, a tax program where we do tax taxes for students there. They're pretty basic, really simple. But at the same time, when I was interviewing with the accounting firms, Several of them pointed this out to, to me and said, hey, you, you, you've done taxes before. You aren't going to look at a tax return and be like, what foreign concept is this? Mm -hmm. So even just something simple like that. I also did a couple of co-op work terms. And those are sweet because some of them will, you know, I think one of mine paid 19 bucks an hour. One of them paid 21 bucks an hour. So you make good money and you get that practical experience. Mm -hmm. And that's so the university. I, right. Yeah. That would be through the university, but my roommate went through SIAS, which is college. So a uh, shorter program. His was a three-year program, but he had, uh, he had co-op work terms that he did through there. Okay. And I mean, he's, he said they were great. Um, yeah. He highly recommends them as well. So. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any advice for people in their twenties? Yeah. So my, my biggest thing is don't care. Don't get carried away with wanting at all right now. Uh, what I mean by that is you're in your twenties and a lot of people, young people nowadays want the latest thing. Uh, I don't know if it's because so, social media drives that or advertisement, mm -hmm. but you see the new iPhone comes out or the new Samsung galaxy or whatever the new latest phone comes out and you see people lining up out the door. Um, they just want the newest thing, right? People want the newest car. They want the, uh, the latest thing. And you're in your twenties. If you're in university, you don't need to get the newest bed or the newest couch or, or the newest, you know, utensils or kitchen place and things like that. Uh, one thing that really helped me was, I, I was okay with, with buying used and we're not talking about just used vehicles. We're talking about used, um, used couches, used furnitures, used utensils, used, used textbooks. So you don't have to buy everything. You don't have to get everything now. Uh, there's, there's stuff in your twenties, but there will also be stuff when you're 50 and 60, there'll stuff will always come out. Right. Right. Whatever is new now in 2020, it'll be old when it's 2040. Yeah. Right. So, and I think we largely overestimate how much we're impressing other people by the stuff that we buy. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and even I was really care. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, you know, it's, 
it's it's not unusual in your 20s to uh to buy this stuff hoping to impress somebody that you have a romantic interest in mm-hmm. and but that being said if if you're buying expensive stuff to impress them they may be an expensive person to um you know to get involved with and that may wreck your future financially right that's not saying everyone Definitely. Does. Not everybody's a gold digger, right? <laughs> yeah. No, that's not what we're trying to say, but it's just don't yeah. get carried away with wanting it all right now, right? It's okay to buy used things. It's okay to go on vacation that are, you know, not extravagant. It's, it's okay to do yeah. that. It's okay to go take drive two hours away to go to a local lake and have a vacation there. You don't need the best things right now in your twenties. You can still enjoy life without the newest and flashiest things. And instead you could take that money that you, you're not buying new things and put it aside and use it for something else down the road. Right. Exactly. So here in Regina, I mean, we, we can go to, to provincial parks. We can go to Banff, Jasper. We can head down to the U S down to Minot. Those are all, you know, inexpensive trips, but also like a heck of a lot of fun. Yeah. So Mm-hmm. You know, you yeah, you don't need to be doing those trips down to Puerto Vallarta every year. You don't need to be doing those huge three month trips to Europe. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and moving on, um, Tim, what's what's something else that you would you have done in your twenties that you would like to share with our listeners that are young? And- yeah. Yeah, I've actually, so I've started investing, which mm. I don't know. It's, I, I mean, I posted on our, on our Facebook page the other day, just the, the difference that investing for only, I think it was eight years in your twenties can make compared to starting 10 years later. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, you invest for what was it? Eight years only in your twenties. And you still come out ahead mm-hmm. uh, compared with the person who invests from when they're 30 years old to when they're six till they're 65 years old, that same amount that you were investing in your twenties. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's actually such an important thing to start investing when you're, when you're in your twenties, mm-hmm. there's lots of options out there in terms of investing. There's even do it yourself, low fee options, like, well, simple quest trade, Robin hood, Mm -hmm. those kinds of options for people. I personally use an investment advisor, but you know, it's, it's all personal preference. Yeah. So speaking of like doing yourself, people out there, listeners out there, young people who are looking into investing, if you do not know what you're doing, don't just throw your money away at random things and saying you're investing. Um, Yes. Do it yourself. If you can figure out what is a good mutual fund or what is a good index fund or, or whatever you want to invest in real estate, yeah. be at that. Um, but, but don't do throw all your money at Bitcoin right off the bat. <laughs> yes. Yes. Don't throw your, or yeah, do your research and, uh, and go from there. And if you don't have the money right now, even 50 bucks a month or even 20, $25 a month, right? That's, that's Definitely. like what five, four or five coffees right there at Starbucks. Yeah. Right. Even that it will add up over time. Um, next week we'll be actually going into a episode going deeper into investing, but there's compound interest, which is interest that grow on top of your interest. And, and the earlier you invest, the earlier compound interest works as magic over time. And yeah, so it, exactly. It, and we'll go in depth into that in uh I guess it's a week or two here that we've got a guest on the show. Who's, who's going to be talking about that. Yeah. But time is on your side. You're in your twenties. Definitely. You have your, the rest of your life to live. And so with so much time left in your life, it is why it's so important to start investing and let compound interest do its thing. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. Do you have any other advice you'd like to give? Uh, Another big thing is uh, this. We talked about this in episode one. We talked about this in episode two um, with credit cards, but this is similar. Pay off all your debt. Uh, right. I think we'll talk about this in every episode about debt 
and uh, debt is uh, is a common thing in today's society in North America, especially. Uh, if you just Google the average American debt or the average Canadian household debt, you'll see a number that's that should not be the average. And don't wait until later in life to pay off your debt. Uh, I think people don't understand that by delaying your debt payment or making the minimum payments, all you're doing is making the bank richer by paying. Right. And let me just jump in here quickly and ask you another question. So there's a lot of different types of debt, right? So you've Mm -hmm. got, you've got student debt, you've got line of credit, you've got mortgage, credit card, uh, car payments. Mm -hmm. Are, are there any types of good debt? Are they all bad debt? Are some better than others? Uh, Depending on the situation, I would say all debt is bad in general, but there's obviously uh, debt that say you go to the casino and you gamble yourself into, you know, trouble, right? Or if you go take a credit card and you go outside and buy a brand new, I don't know, brand new computer and put yourself in debt that way. And there's a difference between going to school and trying to pursue a degree in some, something that's related to your career field and getting student loan debt that way or, or buying a, a house and getting a mortgage. There's debt that way. But uh, debt is debt regardless. But I think not making dumb decisions to have dumb debt is what you should strive not to do in your 20s. So right. i.e., um, if you want to buy a house when you're 26, 27, 28, 29, late, later in your 20s, and you have a career job, and if you want to buy a house and, you know, a starter house, yeah, you can get a mortgage, right, to get a house. But if you're the same age, 28, 29, and you can't pay off your credit card and you continue to go into debt, don't do that, right? So pay off your debt. Uh, the earlier you become debt-free, the more successful you are later in life. Do you agree with that, Tim? Oh, definitely. Yeah. And you've seen that. You've seen that in your personal life, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So when I graduated school, I I had this big mountain of $21,000 of student debt. And for for me, I I wanted to look at saving for a house, Mm -hmm. but I, I realized that I have... $300, $300, I think it was minimum, that has to go to student loans. So I, I can't really plan for having a mortgage payment for, you know, X number of years when I'm also dealing with this, with this student loan. The student loan is eating up a decent chunk of my income. Mm-hmm. So I just said, I want to get rid of that student loan completely. And then I'll just focus on, on saving for a house. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I knocked out that student loan and I guess it was a little bit under a year. And then I was able to say, okay, now I have this extra $300 that I'm able to throw directly at a house. Um, You know, and whereas before, if so right now I'm saving $500 a month towards a house. If I was still paying that $300 each month Mm -hmm. towards student loans, that would mean I'm only able to save $200 a month for a house. Yeah. So that's a big difference. It makes a huge difference. Huge difference. Yeah. So to continue on the pay off all debt thing and, and bad debt and good debt and not wanting the newest thing, another debt that in your twenties, you do not want to get into, which we see young people do this all the time is, and I'm a victim to this is buying a brand new vehicle. All right. Or right. not even buying a brand new vehicle, but buying a used vehicle, even that's in $30,000, $40,000 that they can't actually afford, right? Used vehicles can be very expensive too. Um, So buying a brand new vehicle, all you're doing is putting yourself in a car payment for the next five to seven years, depending on the plan or three to seven years, depending on what you sign up for with interest usually. And you're now stuck in this car payment in your most majority of your twenties and it's taking away every single month, it eats away five, six, seven hundred dollars and that money that you could be using for so many other, other things just to buy a brand new vehicle. It's not worth it. And I can tell you from experience that it's not worth it because that's one of my financial mistakes that I've learned. And 
by making that mistake, I'm able to tell you listeners out there that in your early 20s and heck, even in your 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, if you can't afford a brand new vehicle, don't finance a vehicle. Yeah. And I've, I've even seen where people right out of school will finance a vehicle. Sorry, right out of high school will finance a vehicle. Okay. And then they aren't able to afford university or college. They say, I want to go to college and get an education so I can get a better job. But I'm locked into these payments on my car for four, five, six years before Mm -hmm. I can even think about college. Mm -hmm. So it's something that has the potential to eat up a huge chunk of your budget. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not unusual to pay a lot of interest on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of, of that car, we'll transition to learning from your mistakes, uh, which yeah. is something that I am still doing. I'm, you know, in my later twenties now, but I'm still doing that. Uh, yeah. For example, like I mentioned, I bought a truck. I mentioned episode when I bought a brand new truck. I learned from that mistake. Uh, I'm sure yeah. down the road, I might make some more financial mistakes. Maybe not. Um, but to learn from your mistakes, whatever mistakes you made, like Tim said, uh, he's made student loans mistake. And from that, he wants to prevent his kids from making the same mistakes down the road. Absolutely. So to learn from your mistakes and to not repeat it basically, because if you, if you regret buying that brand new car, but then you go and do it again, that's Mm -hmm. it's, there's no point, right? You didn't learn from from your mistakes. Right, exactly. And mistakes aren't going to necessarily wreck your future or make make your future impossible, make your goals impossible. It's it's all about learning from those mistakes going forward so that you, mm-hmm. you don't repeat those mistakes and get yourself caught in an endless cycle. Yeah. So hopefully when you see those car payments coming out and you're like, man, I hate those car payments. I hate that I'm paying interest. Mm-hmm. that spurs you on to say, actually, I'm going to set aside an extra $200 a month so that when this lease is over and when my car eventually breaks down, I'm going to have enough money that I can just buy a car in cash. I can just buy it up front and not have to deal with these payments ever again. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, question for you, Will. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, how mm-hmm. much you end up spending on your wedding because you are married and I think a lot of a lot of people will get married in their 20s so mm-hmm. I think this is an, an important thing to talk about how much did you spend on your wedding so my wedding was just it was nine just above 10 10 g's okay right and that's with that's not including um I guess my parents helped a little bit and, and my in-laws helped a little bit also so then okay. I really actually cut it down to probably out of pockets, maybe six. Okay. Six, so yeah. out of curiosity, do you happen to know how much the average wedding in Canada costs? Uh, at the top of my head, I want to guess probably double that 20 grand. Uh, a little bit more. Usually a little bit about, more? About triple to quadruple that. Okay. So uh, 30 to wow. 40,000 is how much the average wedding costs Wow, Uh, but that's in Canada. It includes honeymoon, but yeah. I mean, just think about that though. Like that, that $20,000 difference from what you spent to Mm -hmm. what most people are spending. That's a brand new car. (laughs) Like you could have a brand new car instead of, and at the end of the day, you're married. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Whether, you know, whether you have a wedding with freaking white horses and doves and (laughs) unicorns or you get married in, you know, just a small family gathering, you're still married. Yeah. It's nice to have, you know, some nice things to have pictures and, oh yeah, uh, you know, wedding dress and Mm -hmm. things like that. But it also doesn't need to be something that destroys a big chunk of your financial future and even could, uh, you know, that $20,000, it could potentially uh, remove a lot of stress in your marriage down the road. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I think, 
I think the moment from my memory is the moment you mentioned the word wedding, everything triples. I'm talking about cakes, flowers, decorations, anything. The moment you mention, oh, this cake is, you know, $100. But the moment you mention a wedding, it's all of a sudden a three, $400 cake. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's crazy. So I think I'm not going to get into this episode about how we cut costs on our wedding and stuff. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll get my wife on one day and we could talk to her about how we cut costs on the wedding. But um, I think I still enjoy my wedding, even at $10,000. And yeah, I mean, you were there, Tim. And I think the wedding was still, it it was still wow. And you know, yeah, it was a beautiful wedding. Yeah, I think at the end of you the got day, great pictures out of it too, and yeah, exactly. So I think at the, at the end of the day, it's important that you're married. And I think, like, to go back into the twenties thing, yeah, you don't need to keep keep up with the jo- Joneses, is what people say. Um, you don't need to spend what do you say, thirty thousand dollars to forty thousand dollars on a wedding? Yeah, thirty to forty thousand. Yeah, because that's uh, that's, I mean, it's one special day, but you got the rest of your life to live. So enjoy that day, but don't overspend it is what I would say. If you're looking at planning for a wedding or things like that, there's so many ways you can try and cut costs too, if you look into it. So, yeah. And another question for you. Mm -hmm. So you, you're married, but right now you don't have kids. Mm -hmm. Um, Are, are, I guess are, are kids and finances intertwined? Should you be, planning kids and finances at the same time like do you do you need to create a plan in terms of when you have kids and your current financial situation Mm -hmm. so i think to based on this podcast follow the topic of this i think a lot of people in their 20s um, before they have kids i don't know how many people think about budgeting for kids or how much kids would cost and i mean there's diapers that come in place there is uh if your spouse is working maybe she has to be off work for mat leave and there's a pay cut right there or if uh um you're eventually i mean kids down the road your grocery bill will go up and then um i think there's a lot of things to think about in your 20s before you have kids uh there is there are people out there who you know who are young who are 18 19 and have kids and and I don't, I can't speak from experience, but it can't be easy. Um, and I think mm-hmm. budgeting ahead of time before you have kids will really make a difference. Uh, mm-hmm. Once you do have kids, uh, you know, strollers and beds for babies aren't cheap. And if you, if you look at kids, like I want to have, be able to personally um, let my kids go to school debt-free so contributing into an RESP so yeah those are I guess things that not everyone thinks about but mm-hmm. because I'm so financially savvy that I for sure will think about those kind of stuff so uh, if you're in your 20s and you have a job already think about like don't delay having kids if you want to have kids right if you and your spouse mm-hmm. talks about yeah. wanting having wanting to have kids do not delay having kids if you decide to want kids and um yeah, I mean, kids are a blessing. That's how I view it. Yeah. There's, there's so many things like by doing the things that we said earlier, by paying off debt, by investing early, by even putting cash away, you can, once you do have kids, you will be able to have so much more uh, set aside for any emergency that might come up or if the, or any extra expenses that might come along with having kids. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I just want to echo like, yeah, definitely. uh, For those who have kids, it's a blessing. And I mean, we, uh, you know, we applaud you. You guys are doing awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know that they're not cheap. Actually, so so CPA Canada, they say that it costs about $10,000 to $15,000 per year Mm -hmm. uh, for a kid until they turn 18. So times that by 18 people. Yeah. So I mean, it's one of those things. Yeah. You can, you can save money by delaying that, but at the same time, if you have a kid or you, you want to have kids, Mm -hmm. that's great. You guys are doing awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget to uh, to remind people like in their twenties or even people who are ready to have kids that there is the child benefit. You do get money from the government. Mm 
Yeah. And I believe that's pending on your salary. The more you make, the less you get. Uh, but that's, that's to say that that money isn't enough to cover everything that a kid needs. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so Tim, during your twenties, would, what was your experience like when you surround yourself with like-minded people? Do you think, how did that affect you? And do you think people in their twenties or what are your advice to people in their twenties and surrounding themselves with good people or like-minded people or people who want to succeed? Yeah. So I guess, you know, in, in school, we kind of, I, I hung around people who some of them wanted really good jobs, things like that. Um, I don't think anybody really thought too much about their, their student loans. They just kind of mm -hmm. took them out. We'll worry about that later. And that's kind of the same mentality that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think maybe probably about two years ago, mm. you introduced me to Dave Ramsey and he's he's all about you know you need to live with a plan you need to get out of debt mm -hmm. work hard live like nobody else right now so you can live and give like nobody else later on mm -hmm. and and he emphasizes budgets and i guess you know just from listening to him from hanging around you hanging around jackson my our investment advisor hanging around randy who's uh uh, a debt coach here in Regina, just hanging around people who are saying, yeah, we want to succeed financially. Yeah, we want to get out of debt. Yeah, we want to start investing, saving. Mm -hmm. that, really, that really changed things for me. That really mm -hmm. forced me to look at my budget and say, okay, how much can I save? And to look at it again and say, can I save more? Mm -hmm. So when when I switched, uh, so I, I switched jobs last year mm -hmm. from working at an accounting firm to, uh, to working for the government and my paychecks went down a little bit. And I said, you know what, I, I still want to save $500. So I, I'm just going to lower my budget items for, for some of these other things for eating out, uh, for, for miscellaneous. And the reason you had that was because there's like-minded people yeah. that influence you that way. Yeah. I, I saw how much they were able to save, how much they were succeeding. Um, and and I, I looked at that and I said, I want that for myself. I And I'm going to come at life with that same determination. I'm going to come at life and, and attack it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet my goals and I'm going to do what I can right now to make sure that I have a financially stable future. So mm -hmm. hanging out with people who were, who are able to encourage me like that with people who, um, who are able to offer me advice in those ways that I'm able to bounce ideas off of is, is huge. And it absolutely made a difference in, in how much I was saving, how mm -hmm. committed I've been to my budget. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess what we're saying is, you would say it's so important to surround yourself with uh, people who are, you know, like-minded like that. Like, I feel like people say this all the time. I, at least my parents said that to me, like in high school, if you make bad friends, you know, yeah, you veer towards that direction. So if you're in your early twenties and you go to university and you hang out with people who get drunk every single Friday night, every single weekend, Mm -hmm. And they're partying all their hard earned money is away, money away, or worse, getting into debt, just to go partying, right? That mindset will creep into you and yeah. you eventually become one of those people. So if you're in your twenties um, and you're trying to succeed later on in life and you want to do something with yourself and with your life and succeed financially and just in general, surround yourself with people who are successful and, and, they, and I, they say that you become the, I, I believe it's the five closest people that you hang out with. Mm -hmm. So you're definitely in that five for me mm -hmm. and, and it shows because yeah. like I was just saying, my life has, has, you know, taken a different trajectory mm -hmm. because I've been able to get on a budget 
-hmm. and we're always talking about um, the markets and how we're doing and yeah. how, how we're how we're progressing towards our goals mm -hmm. to the point that we started this podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, is there is there anything else that you would uh, say to anyone who's just graduating high school or university right now, or just in their twenties? Yeah, uh, I guess a couple things. One would I, I was talking about it a little bit there, but get on a budget. Uh, you, I don't think we all realize uh, just how important having uh, sinking funds especially are. So sinking funds are money that you're setting aside every month for different planned expenses that'll come down the road. So that might be, for example, I, I, have, a, I have an auto fund. So that includes repairs and maintenance that needs to be done on a vehicle, but it also includes when it comes time to buy another vehicle, I have that money there so that I'm not like, holy crap, now I need to take out a car payment mm -hmm. or how am I going to afford a new car? Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, even just setting up for insurance so that I can pay it annually instead of paying, I, I don't know how much percent interest they charge, but they charge interest if you pay on a, on a monthly they do. basis. They do. Yeah. It's more. And I found that budgeting really, really helped me get my eating out under control. And even just those random purchases of a hundred bucks, 200 bucks there that really add up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then one other piece of advice that I have here is even just learning how taxes work and how did, what deductions and tax credits are available to you. Um, so even just knowing for example, student loan interest is deductible. So if you have that, make sure you're including it on your tax return. Make sure you're asking for donation receipts because even if you can't claim them right now, you, you can carry them forward up to five years. Uh, in Saskatchewan, we have the graduate ta uh, retention tax credit, which is sweet. Uh, tuition, you can split, I believe it's up to $5,000 of that with your parents. So what mm -hmm. my dad did was he would claim that and he would just give the money to me. So it's like an extra thousand bucks or something like that. And a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, exactly. Right? You want to just explain that quick for even parents out there who are listening or, or college kids? Right. Yeah. So say you pay $8,000 during the year in, in tuition. So you'll get your tax slip. That's it's called a T2202A and you get this slip and it says, okay, uh, Tim paid $8,000 in tuition during the year. You have the option to be able to, if you don't have enough income during the year to be able to use up all those tax credits, you can transfer up to $5,000, I believe it is, to your parents. And they can claim that on their tax return if they have enough income. So if so what my dad did in my case is he claimed that, but then he calculated how, mu how much of an additional uh, tax return he got because he was claiming these tuition tax credits. And he took that difference and he just gave it back to me to be able to use towards, you know, tuition or uh, probably McDonald's in my case, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a really helpful tip for, like people don't know that. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. And even to just, uh, moving expenses. So if you have to move away to go to school, there are certain moving expenses that mm -hmm. you can claim as well. So yeah. Yeah. that's no, good to that's know good. about as well. That is good. Cool. Um, I guess, uh, I have one more thing. Um, do you have anything else, Tim? Before no, I that's, that's all I've got for today. Okay. So the, the last one is you're in your 20s, have fun with it. And what we mean by everything we've said up to this point is, uh, you know, it's like telling you to do certain things so you can succeed later on in life. But you are in your 20s. I'm still in my 20s. Have fun. Uh, if you're in debt or if you, you know, or if you're going to school full time or in the summer you're working, still go on, you know, still go do things that you enjoy in life. 
uh, maybe treat yourself, like maybe not eat out every single meal or, you know, maybe even eat out once a month or something or, or treat yourself to a $10 movie at the movie theater with friends. And, um, you know, you're in your twenties, you can still like, if you want to travel, you don't have to go to, you know, all inclusive vacation, right? Go, go hiking, go for a walk, go, you know, go, go travel down, go camping, right? There's, there's things that you can do that's cheap. That's not super expensive, but you can still have fun with it. Um, and we harp a lot on those, on those big vacations and in the twenties, but that being said, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm-hmm. So for myself, I, uh, I have a sinking fund for vacation. Mm-hmm. So I set aside money every month. So it, if you set aside that money every month and you know, it just builds up, especially during COVID where uh, we're traveling, isn't really that much of an option. So maybe you set aside, you know, 1800 bucks this year for travel and you're like, okay, I'm not going to be able to travel this year. That means next year I'm going to have 3,600 bucks. You know, you might be able to take that vacation, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, down South to Mexico or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's less about doing, doing or not doing these specific things, but more about living within your means, living within your budget. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the, just really approaching life with a plan and everything else will kind of take care of itself from there. As long as you've got a good plan in place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I mean, sorry, just to, just to add as well, I've, you know, we're talking about having fun. So like I just said, I've got sinking fund for vacation. I've also got budget for entertainment, restaurants, sports, Mm -hmm. different things like that. So I, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not holding back completely in life and throwing everything that I have towards investments. I, I'm still having fun, still making the most out of life, Mm -hmm. but also knowing what I'm capable of, what's responsible yeah yeah exactly yeah i think uh i think that's it for for this you know for all the tips that we have uh, at least from up to this point in our 20s um the things that we've done and that i that tim's done that i've done to to you know try to succeed as as much as possible and for those of you who are you know interested in hearing our story you can go back to episode one uh, where we kind of talk about our mistakes and kind of where we are at in life now. Um, Tim, do you have anything you would like to add before we, before we end? I mean, just that the twenties are such a, a crucial point in terms of uh, you can set yourself up so well financially for the future. If you, mm-hmm. if you handle your twenties, right. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mentioned before, there's a, there's a post on Facebook about how investing in your twenties can just drastically impact your future. Mm -hmm. So definitely take things seriously now, Mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to, uh, you're going to be able to live life with more peace of mind with, without stressing as much of finances later on if if you're really diligent right now in your 20s exactly yeah those are those are really good points uh yeah i think that will be it for this podcast uh thank you guys for staying with us the whole way we look forward to you know making more episodes down the road and for those of you who are interested we've started a segment within this podcast called the six figure millennials where we speak to different millennials who have, you know, saved over hundred K hundred thousand dollars early on in, in life. And they talk about their stories and how they can succeed and how you, especially people in your twenties can save up to a hundred thousand dollars in your twenties. So it is possible. And we're going to be having a lot of guests on for the segment six, six figure millennials. And other than that, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, Thanks for listening to this episode. And right now we are on Instagram. Now we are on Facebook. 
uh, you can search up, up at the Financial Classroom Podcast. Um, and yeah, we are on Spotify now, Cashbox, Anchor, Google Podcasts. Uh, still working on Apple Podcasts. They're taking a while and on Stitcher now also. And so, yeah, if you, if you like this episode, if you enjoy listening to us, feel free to subscribe to us. Um, leave us a review. That will really help. And before every single episode, Tim is the social media guy um, and he'll post a post about, you know, the topic of the episode and what's coming up. So if you have any questions, leave in the comment, Tim, do you have anything to add to any social media things? Yeah. If, if you guys can interact with those posts, we'd love to answer your questions. We'd love to share your stories, whether they're, uh, whether they're successes or whether they're something that you learned a lesson from, Mm -hmm. we'd love to answer your questions, give you a shout out on the podcast here. So definitely Facebook and Instagram interact with those posts and Mm -hmm. we'd love to help you out. That's awesome. And Tim, there's an email and just give the email a shout and then people can send any questions or anything, frankly, anything, even hate mails, whatever you want to that email. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, maybe you don't feel comfortable commenting on, on Facebook or Instagram and having other people see your, your stories or see your successes, your mistakes, whatever the case may be. So you can email us at financialclassroom at gmail.com. And we'd love to answer your questions from there as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. uh, Thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll try and roll more episodes and until next time, take care.